now. In 2016, a Texas mother left her family in search for a simpler life. Little did this woman know that she was about to walk into an even messier situation than before. This young woman is Carla Solomon. Carla relied on a very close friend for comfort during this hard time in her life, even working for him to make ends meet. She drove this man around town with another lady friend, making numerous stops at questionable places. The man's name was Herman Henry Fox. One day, um, Fox had Carla drive um, the other lady friend to a remote area in Texas where he beat this woman and, and nearly killed her. He then had dri Carla drive him to a local hotel and began um, taking pictures of Carla. Carla noticed that Fox was placing Carla's picture online and was actually putting her up for ads for sex trafficking. Carla would then endure being sold and treated as property for 54 days before she managed to contact a police officer while Fox was busy. Fox was eventually arrested and Carla was freed. Carla now spends her time helping other women and men overcome their struggles related to sex trafficking through local nonprofit organizations in Texas and throughout the United States. Her broken chain tattoos encircle the 225 brandish marking that Fox used to ID her. They now symbolize her freedom and hope. Next slide. Now keeping Carla and others in mind, we will now be discussing sex trafficking and specifically what it is and how we can help recognize it and fight it in our communities and throughout the world. Thanks, Nikki. So first, we're going to discuss what sex trafficking is, the definition. So sex trafficking is the action or practice of illegally transporting someone from one area to another area for the purpose of sexual exploitation. So basically, someone that is sold for sex is what sex trafficking is. There are a few things that I want to share with you, some statistics. Right now, there are almost 5 million people who are being held in sex slavery. The exact number is 4.8 million people. And a lot of people think, oh, it's not in the United States, it's just in other, other countries. But there are actually hundreds of thousands of these cases in the United States. So there is a nonprofit organization called Operation Underground Railroad. OUR, or Operation Underground Railroad, exists to rescue children from sex trafficking. Out of those 4.8 million people who are sex trafficked, there are men and women and children. Operation Underground Railroad works specifically with children. They do two different things, coordinated rescue and recovery planning. So you, when you think Operation Underground Railroad, you think of the Underground Railroad, right? You, that's the, the trail that they took for freedom. And that's exactly what Operation Underground Railroad does, is they help people find that trail to freedom. They actually go in to other countries as well as states in the United States, and they coordinate rescue, meaning they go in and they save or rescue the children that are being held in different facilities. They go in undercover and they rescue those children. And then they have a recovery planning station that helps children and um, some of them they bring adults with them get back on their feet uh, they have soccer games that or soccer practices that they hold they also have cooking classes just different things that kids enjoy to help them to recover um, from from what they have gone through um, over the last six years operation underground railroad has rescued 3,800 victims they have also assisted in the arrests of 2,100 traffickers. So they go in, like I said, undercover, and some of the time they pretend like they are going to buy those children so that they can go rescue them and then help arrest the people that they're working with. If they just go in and rescue the children, it's hard for them to really know who was behind it. So they go in as the bad guys, and they are able to work with these evil men and women, and then they're able to help the police officers in certain areas to arrest those traffickers. So Operation Underground Railroad does a lot, not only for children, but also for the safety of many more children and adults 
because they help in the arrests of those traffickers. Okay, so a lot of the times we often wonder what we can do to help and how, um, how hard is it to help or how easy it is to help. So I'm just going to go and um, tell you a little bit of a couple of things that might make it a lot easier and persuade us a little bit more so that we can be able to help those in need. Um, next slide. So in a different survey, over 500 college students that was taken, you can see here on the slide the breakdown of where most of the majority of the money, their money was spent um, every day living, like for, I think it was for about a year. Um, so these are just some statistics that I found. 99% go to restaurants, 57% go to media, 59% go to live music, et cetera, et cetera. Um, another thing, Thing that was said was that in one year, um, kids or not kids, college students from the ages of 18 through 24 spent about five billion dollars on clothes alone, not just like other stuff like gym or fitness or going out or whatever. It was five billion on clothes, and another 5.5 billion dollars was spent on alcohol. Um, Four million dollars was spent on um, media, or like live music, concerts, going out with your friends. So in the time of one year, billions and billions of dollars are going to things that are a necessity for some. Yes, we want to go out, but not, ex like, not everybody has the accessibility to spend that much money on clothes. And so we often question, what can we do? Next slide. Um, how we can donate. Here's another quick little summary on just some college, you can see the millennials, Gen X and the boomers, what we're going through and what we spend more. It has significantly increased, especially with things such as taxis and Ubers that's become very popular to get through, especially around downtown, et cetera. Um, everybody, Starbucks, they have it everywhere, every corner. The average person spends about four or five dollars on a coffee, probably at least once a day. Um, like I said, again, clothes that are not necessary, 69% millennials spend more money on that. Um, so the question is, what can we do? What can I do to help? How? Like, I don't know if I have the funds for it, et cetera. After seeing all these statistics that we just spend and throw our money on. Next slide. Um, we believe and we feel like, like we are able to at least donate a couple dollars a month to this organization. Um, a lot of times, one of the other main concerns of, I don't know where my money is going to go, um, besides the fact of like an excuse of not having enough money, Another one is, how do I know where my money actually goes? So as we can see on the next slide, here's the breakdown of where your money actually goes to this specific organization, OUR. Um, we can see that 5% of it goes to general administration funds to get the paperwork, et cetera. 10% of it goes to some more fundraising and 85% of it actually goes, to, well, it all goes towards it, but goes towards the program and the mission of OUR. Um, so if we think that we're not able to donate and we think that we're not able to, we don't have enough money or we're poor college students, I would just suggest taking a close look at what we actually spend our money on. Um, if it's that coffee a day, if it's that Red Bull a day, if it's unnecessary clothes spending that we spend, um, maybe try and just see if there's a couple, even $5 a month to go and be able to help something that can help not only um, like kids, but like we saw in the first couple slides, almost 5 million people are trafficked. So. Thanks, Cynthia. I think it's also important to reiterate the fact that we oftentimes do spend our money on things that we don't need, but there are several other ways that we can help in the fight against sex trafficking. 
And first and foremost, it's mostly important to be thoroughly educated about what sex trafficking is and also how to recognize it. I think sometimes we get caught up in life and we don't really look around at those who are in our communities and whatnot. And so being able to spot people who might be involved in sex trafficking or those who are you know, victimizing individuals to do such things um, can really help prevent um, further sex trafficking as well. And then second, if you are aware and you are educated of what sex trafficking is and the different sci the signs that come with it, um, it's further, it's, it's important for you to contact your local law enforcement um, and or the 24 hour national human trafficking hotline. Um, being involved in your community as well as with your nation in a fight against a social cause is um, kind of, it's grounds for uh, good efforts, I guess. It's a charitable effort to help those that can't help themselves. And then lastly, it's also really important that we support local and national resources by being an active participant and voice against sex trafficking in general. Um, I've always been taught that don't wait for others to help and or solve a problem and that you should learn to speak up when you see things that just don't look right. And especially as college students, I know that UVU has a program that is geared specifically towards helping uh, victims of sex trafficking as well as other sexual harassment cases. And so being able to be educated and speak up can help so many other people in our community and throughout the world. All right, so I know most people think that it doesn't happen around here. So Bailey Orr, this girl, she's from Utah and she just met her friend and her and her friend ended up being sex trafficked by her friend's father, Joseph Moore. And at first it started out, they just go talk to some guys and hang out. And eventually they started doing up to eight meetings a day. And because she was in so much pain, she said she that her pain wasn't as bad. And the way Joseph Moore did it, he ended up making her feel like she needed to blame herself and that it was her fault that all of this was happening because she decided to hang out with them. So with Bailey Orr, she didn't think it was, she thought it was her fault. And it's a local thing. She now understands it's been two years since she had gotten out and she understands now that it's not her fault and that we need to speak up about things that are happening like this because it happens in just everyday life without her even knowing about it. Uh, next slide. So to wrap it all up, Nikki said it perfectly where we need to just speak up locally. There's, if you don't have the money to help, you can always sit there and contact your local law enforcement. If something looks weird, if there's any way, if anything you see going on that's wrong. But also we just need to be cautious of the people around us. Like, Bailey Orr never saw that coming. I'm sure Carla Solomon didn't see it coming. And I'm sure her family, if they would have paid a little more attention and they would have spoke up, they could have helped prevent some things. But then also, if you go to ourrescue.org, that's the website for Operation Underground Railroad, you can learn a little bit more about the organization and what they do. And you can find out more ways you can help, whether it's donate to them. You can find another community to donate to. But there's always ways to help. And this is just a personal, super scary thing that can happen to anybody. And so just keep our, our eyes open and hopefully together we can help stop what's been going on. And I believe that is all we have. I don't have any more slides. Thank you for staying at our presentation and listening to us. Hopefully we did all right.